What is going on, Duff Daddies and Duff Mamas? It is Wednesday, March 16th. Happy St. Patrick's Day early. But if you're listening to this on St. Patrick's Day, happy St. Patrick's Day to you, to fellow Irishman, my favorite holiday. But welcome to the Duff and Up podcast. My name is Brendan Monroe, and I am an angry little elf this week. Uh, joining me, as always, are the two best co-hosts in the game. Uh, first off, we have the one, the only, Michael Adams. Michael, how are we doing down there? Brendan, I'm doing well, man. Excited to be here once again. feel like we're getting in a nice little groove, you know, coming off of a Players' Championship. I know we said it's Wednesday. We're recording. It's Tuesday night. Don't lie to the don't lie to the gallery, but uh, no, I mean it's getting released on Wednesday. It's getting released on Wednesday, but I mean players trickled into Monday. It was nice to have uh, you know some 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 important golf to watch following the conclusion of the workday yesterday, and uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll dive into it. But we're recording live during during the NCAA March Madness first four playing games, and you know. All is right with the world right now. I'm 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 ecstatic about you know sports in general and big hoops guy here and you know I know we got the Valspar this weekend but once this NCAA tourney's done with and over you know what that means man you know what that means we got Augusta Georgia the Masters right around the corner oh yeah second best tournament in April of course after the RBC Heritage but I digress. You Continue, Michael. <laughs> no, that's all I have. Let's go Friars. Have fun if you're an Irishman on, on St. Paddy's Day. Friars tip at 1240. If, you, if there's room on the bandwagon, there is absolutely room on that bandwagon if you're not on it. Golly. Uh, just so everyone knows, if you're watching this podcast, you will see our eyes going towards other screens. That is because all of us have the first four games on right now. As Timmy just. <laughs> Timmy hates seeing ball go in the hoop. He's Ooh. got the under, hammering the under. Timmy's got That's the under it. tonight, so he does not enjoy balls going into hoops. Uh, speaking of Timmy, the third co, the third and definitely not least co-host, uh, Timmy O'Reilly. Timmy, how are we doing tonight? Oh, top of the morning to you. It is <laughs> the beautiful week. It's a beautiful week. It is St. Patrick's Day week, an Irish holiday that is very American. Uh, and it is even more important. It is the beginning, like we said, of March Madness. And like Michael said, go Friars. It's a big week. Can't wait to talk next week about it. But this week, we got a big tournament to talk about, first of all. So let's get right into it. Yep. And as always, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to root for actual winners, you can root for the Villanova Wildcats. Uh, but anyways... Ooh. And we, we, we have already, we can't see you boo, Michael. You just put your screen down. Anybody watching on the YouTube channel, you know, subscribe, you know, like, listen, all the works, do it up. But you'll notice I have a different bucket hat on Tim, Timbo, Brian O, Jimmy P. We all went to Mystic Dunes down in Florida two, two weekends ago. And I had to, I had to give the 1988 U.S. Open at the Country Club bucket a, a good rinse in the wash. So we're rocking the, the new Mystic Dunes bucket. Just a little bit of a break. It's, it's a nice respite. It's a nice respite for, the, for, for, that, for that bucket. Um, but as, as Mike said, as Timmy said, you know, besides talking about the NCAA tournament, which as a golf podcast, we're going to do anyways, because I don't care, because I love the, the NCAA tournament as well. Um, we had... The fifth largest tournament on the calendar. We'll not call it the fifth <laughs> big purse. Major. Big purse. Big purse. $22 million. Uh, and the reason why we're not calling it the fifth major is because of the absolute debacle that happened this week at the Players' Championship. I have many things to say. If anyone else wants to go first before we go full Brendan rant on probably like this, this may break Timmy O'Reilly's record for, for rant when Tim did his amazing baseball lockout rant that we just stood and had like a, an absolute standing applause for. And it honestly, it saved baseball because the next week they signed the deal. Hashtag Timmy. Huge. Huge deal. Amazing deal. Huge baseball deal. back. Baseball's but, back. 
But anyways, does anyone else want to go first before before I start ripping in? I, 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 don't, I don't really know what you're ripping into here. I'm excited to I'm excited to hear the rip, but uh, no, I mean shoot shoot from the hip, Brendan. I thought we had a pretty pretty good tournament. I know the the players were very um, you know high praise of of the grounds crew at TPC Sawgrass. A lot of the volunteers there. We we know that it bled into Monday. Obviously, rain heavy big time rain heavy wind heavy thought JT was gonna was gonna follow the unbelievable performance he put forth on was it Saturday Friday or Saturday which one was Sunday. it when? no yeah it was was it Sunday it was, uh, it was uh Sunday yeah round yep his round three Sunday or his round, round two like no Sunday. no round it was two Saturday. Sunday because he round two Sunday really hot Sunday morning and has finished up round two yep and he had kind of a slide back on round three. No, yeah. I'm thinking. I'm thinking of uh, the round before that when he he was playing in Thursday morning. It wasn't he... Thursday morning. I think it was. Oh no, he was. He was a Saturday. He was a Saturday guy. That is correct. Michael yeah. is correct. Oh, yeah, he was a Saturday uh, guy. Yep. He was. He was the low man out of that out of that group that was playing in Hurricane Katrina. I mean, holy. He goodness. was the only man out of that group, basically. Yeah. Which is where we start the rant. Um, we start this rant. He's been yeah. fo- he's been foaming at the mouth all week. I have been foaming at the mouth. Got to say, I was so mad. I am so mad at the players' championship right now. Not at the grounds crew. Not at Potabi. Not at not at TPC. Not at any. They didn't do anything wrong. It was just brutal. It was brutal watching. It was, uh, I would go so far as to say it was almost not enjoy a not enjoyable product at some point. Uh, I do not watch the Players' Championship like it's the U.S. Open. I do not like that. I like the Players' Championship because it's its own tournament. I like seeing the drama. There wasn't really any drama just because every single ball that was hit off the 17th was going into the water. It was horrendous. I was like, every single shot was basically going into the water uh 35 mile an hour winds basically you know up they said i think at one point they said it was up to a 50 mile an hour gust uh justin thomas was hitting his six iron off the 17th tee to 135 i did hear, i did see that uh six iron off off the tee at 135 yards and then sunday comes around and it's all nice and calm and it's a little chilly in the morning, but they get out there and they just start shooting straight back to crazy under par again. And I'm sitting there and I've got all these guys that I root for in that round, in that, you know, Saturday, Saturday, more Saturday day group. And I'm sitting there and I'm just like, this isn't fair. It was not fair. I don't, but here's the thing. What could they have done? That's the only thing. Like I, I put out a video and I was like, this is obviously not fair to the guys who have this, you know, that was supposed to be late Thursday, early Friday. Most of late Thursday got rained out. All of Friday, Friday got rained out. Mm-hmm. They're going out there, you know, playing two rounds in that nonsense. I'm surprised anyone made the cut from that group. What would you, I, you're absolutely right. I mean, what would you have done in, it's kind of like, it stinks that like not everything is always fair um, in that, mm-hmm. in that particular instinct uh, instance. But I mean, I don't know what I would have done in, The PJ tour has to put on a round of golf as, you know, as soon as possible. I mean, they just want to get as most golf in as exactly. possible. It's tough. I mean, that's just like the luck of the draw. And uh, keep going, but I have another thing that is definitely unfair, which I'll go back to a point we've we battled before, but um, keep going, Brendan. I love where you're going. No, I just think the only thing they could have done is literally they could have said, we're not playing Friday, we're not playing Saturday, round two's on Sunday. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and especially because they started Saturday at noon. If they would have started it in the morning, and they said the course wasn't playable in the morning, so I get Again, I put my camera over here now, so I'm blocking myself whenever I go like that, talking with my hands, super fun. Um, they said it wasn't playable Saturday morning. Like they couldn't have played Saturday morning. They had to let it dry out. They had to let 
um you know it drained they had to go out there with the squeegees that was one of my favorite things in the world i don't know if you guys enjoyed that or not but just watching the squeegees them squeegeeing up everything um it was it, it, it it's just it's one of those things where if they would have been able to start in the morning then the other group that only played some you know the other guys that really only played sunday like they would have been able to you know kind of get in there um and i think they would have at least had to play nine holes or maybe even their entire round in those conditions mm-hmm. just bad. it's it's a really really bad look for the pga tour to have that big of a difference after also coming off of a huge 24 hour rain delay as well you know what i mean like i i, I don't know what they can do at that point cuz they can't just go to sunday like they could have said like we're not playing Friday. We're not playing Saturday. Second rounds on Sunday, you know, all good. We're going into Tuesday, but then that cuts into the next event and everything like that. And it just, it turns into an absolute crap shoot. You know what I mean? Oh, but that that I can agree with Brendan. Just say no one plays on that travesty of yeah. day or that, that hard wind, hard wind day, or everyone plays in the, the wind and the rain. Cause there wasn't much lightning. It was mostly just unplayable conditions. Correct. There was no was, lightning. There was no, no lightning, lightning on Saturday. It was just unplayable because of the amount of rain they got on Friday. Right, right. So I, I do like that, that just completely take everything out rather than have half the field play in unbearable conditions and, um, you know, all or nothing, all, all or none. And there's a lot of pushback too from like other people that are like, oh, I mean, I got a lot of it too. Like the British Open, for example, they always have this happen basically like it's the luck of the draw, but it's like at the same time, there wasn't a two day delay. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden you're throwing only half the group out there. Like, no, like it's Thursday morning. Everyone's out, you know, half of the group's out Thursday afternoon. Everyone's out. Then that group goes to the, you know, so it, it was just crazy to me that it was like, these guys got screwed not once, but twice. <laughs> right. Right. Mm-hmm. So the, my, my biggest motto is play better and play better. And what I mean by that is there's no excuses. Um, no matter what the conditions are, or, I mean, everyone has to do where the hole is. Everyone has to deal with the same thing. Just play better. I mean, there's a fair way to put it into. Um, you're supposed to put it in the fairway and that should give you a good, like, so if you hit in the rough, you're like, Oh, I have a terrible lie in the rough. Well, there's a, there's a fairway right there. Um, you should put it in the fairway. So this is what got me bad. When Paul Casey hits an absolute, wow, what a block. And <laughs> I hit, oh, what, and uh, when Paul Casey hits an absolute mammoth drive on the 16th hole, and his ball ends up in a ball mark, which, to which it was not his own ball mark, because we know the new rule is that if your ball ends up in its own ball pitch mark, then you can take it out and whatever. Um, but it was not his own ball mark, so he could not take that out. And so on a par five that is easily reachable in two, he had to take a pitching wedge or whatever kind of wedge he took and just hit it another 100 yards ahead just because if he tries to hit a three iron to get it to the green, it's going to spray or who knows what the hell it's going to do. That's a rule that you cannot just play better. That's a rule that can easily be fixed because that Paul Casey hit it to a spot where you are supposed to hit and you are supposed to be granted a decent lie in the fairway. I mean, that's where you, that's where the goal is to hit. You are assuming that if you hit it in the fairway, you're going to have a decent look at the green. with like hitting out of divots. Like when, like Lee Wetz with last year having to hit out of divot at the Arnold Palmer when he's playing, when he's going down against Bryson. And it's just like, dude, you hit a perfect, yeah. We've had that conversation before. <laughs> it's, never it's seen serious. this one before, though. Never seen, we've seen the divot, but like. Yeah. It's the I've never seen the ball mark. I've never was... seen it just like sink into someone else's sunken ball mark. That's crazy. Right. And wasn't it lift clean in place like Thursday, Friday? Too? It was. It was. It was so it's like, I, did they even play anything on Friday? Did they get any of the rounds in on Friday? Like, I forget. Maybe? I don't believe but they I, did. Yeah, think, it was uh, definitely lift place. Oh, they did get a few. They did get a few. It was definitely lift clean and place on Thursday. And fr- it was definitely that on Thursday and mm-hmm. Friday. Yeah, there's got to be. Because Jordan Spieth got that. I don't know if you guys saw that, but he hit onto that little trail that goes to the 17th green. Um, mm-hmm. He hit on that little path. And if he did not have lift clean in place, he would have had to either hit lefty or hit a little, I don't know, chip and magoo um but he got a lift clean in place which gave him a huge right-handed 
uh, stance advantage. Um, so that I do specifically remember they do had they did have the lift clean in place on Friday. So that means therefore they did play golf on Friday. So that means yeah, yeah the conditions were wet and soft, and you would think that would trickle into into Monday, but it was kind of um, interesting too. On that same hole, Timmy he ended up hitting a kind of a shitty approach on sixteen, where it kind of trickled to the right, like down below behind a water um, sprinkler head. And since like the water sprinkler head was like so many feet to the green, like he couldn't move his ball. Like, so he couldn't putt that he had to chip it over. It just Paul Casey got the shit <laughs> end of the stick. Could not get the stick. <laughs> and, absolutely and then, shafted. Absolutely. Absolutely shafted. shafted. And, and then, yeah, I mean, Cam Smith, I don't know. I can't find your show notes anywhere, Brendan. I'm, I've been looking all over Google docs, but regardless, they should be know, in there. I don't know if you were going to talk about, cam smith's shot into 17 on monday but there's no way that he was putting that approach that that tee shot right of the pin like he he i saw him hit it i was like that's water all over it and then he hits it to like three feet when it's like you're up two. like why why are you taking the pin on so so aggressively and then my bad they're in there now and then paul (laughs) and then paul casey hits it's a doinker right to the center of the green. Like a, again, he was just right. Ra- he must've been rattled from the previous hole. We needed a little bit more out of Paul on, on 17. Cause on 18, you saw Cam Smith, you know, put in the water right after his, after his drive and the mm-hmm. tournament was, was to be, to be taken there. And I feel like, you know, you had, you had Keegan Bradley kind of, kind of wasted away. You had, you had Paul Casey, Lahiri. You didn't have any guys up there that, that really tested Cam, but, kudos you know that that shot into 17 was was lights out and uh, i think he did say that he didn't mean to take it on that aggressively but would have loved to would have loved to see that one kaplunk you know at that point in time bring bring everybody back into the field brendan i don't know what you're talking about with hating what you saw this weekend i mean obviously would have loved to see it go down thursday friday saturday sunday but when you're hearing the announcers say that there's like this is the 150th thousandth ball in the water for the weekend. I love every second of it. You know, you got Brandel Shambly saying that the 17th hole is unfair. You got the other guy saying the other guy from, from Europe. I forget his name saying Paul McGinley, Paul McGinley, exactly what Timmy's saying. You know, everybody's playing the same hole. Unfortunately, I think there was like eight golfers that didn't play on uh, I think it was Saturday or, or Friday. I forget which one. Saturday. There was eight. No, it wasn't eight golfers. It was eight groups. So it was 24 golfers did not play a single hole on Saturday. Yeah, when JT was battling the the hurricane. And JT hit a six iron into into 135-yard green. Yeah, that's but, correct. Hey, you got to play better. You got to, you know, take one shot at a time. And JT is going to be a better golfer for that this year, right? That's why I got him in my DF lineup this week. You better believe it. Mm. Well, speaking of daily fantasy, we got we got more problems. We have more problems with the Players Championship. Um, but before we get that, just want to say, sixty-two percent of the golfers who've made the cut played in the easier wave of the Thursday morning. What would have been Friday afternoon, but ended up being more Sunday morning. I would have thought um, that number would have been a higher percentage, to be honest. That's a very, I mean, that's a no, very that's not, high percentage. It's not a great, I mean, 50, 50, it's only 12, 62%. It's, it's not that crazy. Crazy. And the high. other one's 38 though, Mike. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, but I, I, with the conditions, I would have, I would have thought that it would have been, mm. it would have been like 70, 30. Three full shot difference between the two heats though. That's crazy. That's right. insane. That is usually not like a thing. It's usually barely a shot, even at like the British Open where there's big switches in the weather and everything. Um, but daily fantasy was also one of the main reasons why this week was an absolute debacle. Timmy, this game's an absolute going over. debacle. This game's going over, Tim. I'm sorry to say it. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, this game's <laughs> gone very over. They haven't missed oh. in the last like 10. 10- Play some defense. <laughs> Jesus oh. Christ. Brendan, what did you say though? Oh. <laughs> so we need to talk about daily fantasy real quick because I am very upset at the daily fantasy creators, uh, at the daily fantasy companies. 
when a player withdraws from a tournament and has not hit a single shot, you should be able to replace them. The PGA Tour Fantasy has done a great job in letting people do that. They also let you replace people when they miss cuts, but you have to take them from your bench and everything like that. Daily Fantasy people, lock your time, lock your tournament in when the first group tees off. Hmm. I think you should be able to make changes in waves. So like if the, there's an afternoon wave and someone from the morning withdraws before hitting a shot, you should be able to take that person out, put in someone else. You're and why it became here. a big deal that it had never been that big of a deal until this week when Hideki Matsuyama withdrew five minutes after the lineups closed. <laughs> Love that. Love that. They said 12% of all daily fantasy lineups had Hideki Matsuyama in it. Brendan, so Brendan you're saying as, as, as long as someone has not hit a tee shot in the tournament, you should be able to pick them or swap them out? As long, so if someone withdraws without hitting, you know what I mean? If someone withdraws without playing in the tournament. So if they withdraw even after the tee times, you should be able to take someone from the afternoon wave and put that in. Or from the, the biggest thing yes. and what I saw, which is a good idea too, you get the per, you get that person's. Uh, so like, for example, Patrick Rogers replaced Tadeki Matsuyama. So you should get Patrick Rogers in your field automatically. They just replace whoever withdrew with the person who replaced him. So is Patrick Rogers like hanging out at? He just hang, yeah. Vigra, he's the first like hoping just, hoping that is that what these guys do? They travel there to hang out to hope. So the funny thing was Aaron Rye was the second alternate, and he didn't travel. And as soon as Hideki Matsuyama withdrew, and Patrick Rogers was the first alternate, and he played. Aaron Rye had to withdraw his second his 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 alternate status because he wasn't at the course. <laughs> yeah, I saw something real quick about how last minute there was so many withdrawals that like the fourth or fifth alternate got in. But Brendan, you're saying kind of like fantasy football, you know, like you gotta you gotta you run got the back one o'clock games. You got, you the, got the running back game. at the four twenty five start. You know, you got you, the eight o'clock games. You got the Monday night game if. If the running back at the 425 start comes up on the inactive list, you you know, you remove them, you, you submit your, your Monday, Monday night running back, all that good stuff. I hear it. I hear it. I'm just saying, and and that's the thing is DraftKings does this in every other deal. Uh oh, something big happened. Oh, that's a good block. <laughs> God, this is the worst. We may have to Fuck name it. this one the worst podcast ever. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, Tim, sorry. RIP in peace. You're you're under. Oh. They still got free throws and everything to go too. <laughs> oh. Just hammer the next one. Indiana, Wyoming. Hammer Wyoming and the under. <laughs> oh man. But um yeah, I just I'm I'm just looking at it at that perspective where it's like, okay, this guy is, you know, he never shot a single shot and you can't replace him. You can't replace him even with the alternate. Like, that's crazy. That's insane. Absolutely insane to me. I definitely agree with you, Brennan. There's, there should be some sort of, if someone, someone in the afternoon, I like that. Someone in the afternoon who has not hit a ball yet, yeah. who has yet to take a swing in the tournament, definitely be able to put him in. I agree. Because that's the thing. When your tee time goes, like, you can lock him in, but then, like, it'll show, like, oh, he withdrew. He doesn't have a tee time. You know, you go in, you pick someone else. Yeah. I think that's easy. I think that's pretty easy. I think it's straightforward. But, you know, apparently two big companies haven't decided that yet. And boy, did they get a lot of hate this week. <laughs> I saw it all really, like on, on social media and everything like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, really? yeah. Because you had such a big name. And you had such a big name. Like Hideki Matsuyama, they said, like I said before, he was in 12% of all Daily Fantasy lineups across platforms. Damn. That's a lot. That's a, that's a lot of people who get upset. I agree. I, mean, I was one of them. Was money on them. Yes. Tim, weren't you one of them too? No, did not. I had Sanjay M. Oh, uh, right, 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 right. Mike, did you have Hideki? Negative. But my lineup probably finished worse than yours. Definitely not. I had four, I had four guys missed. I had Hideki. 
I had three guys miss the cut, and I had Billy Horschel <laughs> withdraw. Oh, Billy, Billy didn't even make it. Didn't he make an eight on uh on seventeen? He withdrew after a birdie. <laughs> he did. <laughs> yeah, I think he just hurt himself. Yeah, he made a big. Oh. Big... But anyways, I mean, so we just went through a, a lot of negatives about the players, which I was mad about. We did have some very funny, very great moments and some very funny moments. Uh, Zach Johnson on the 18th hole, warming up, doesn't address the ball, smashes it to the side. Again. Not a stroke. Not a stroke. Not a stroke. Not a stroke, but that begs the question, should it be a stroke? No. I agree. No intent. It shouldn't be a stroke. Intent. No, no, intent. no intent to hit it. But he keeps Game's, game's hard it. enough. Game's he hard enough. He keeps doing it. <laughs> looking at the, this is the, the third cut. time in the past year he's done it it's hilarious every time he does it too oh he's this time he was like not again <laughs> did he did he put up four like that's the fourth time i've done that yes holy goodness we got i mean i'm looking at this cut 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 leaderboard you got speed plus seven shaw flight plus seven female plus seven i mean my goodness. You got they all played in that brutal. They all played in that brutal win. Like it just wasn't fun. Tommy Fleetwood didn't play in that shitty shit. I don't think he was. Nope. He, he stayed did not. Day one. No, His balls were caught morning Cause he, he was, he sprinted out to the lead. Yeah. And I mean, Tommy, come on, man. Got, got a root for that guy, but guy, guy was six under after day one playing in pristine conditions. Finishes at five under for the for the tourney. I mean, likable guy. They're obviously, like, talking through his struggles there after round one. I mean, obviously he had a great round one, but he's been talking about his previous struggles. So you you kind of like root for the guy and you get him in your your corner, and then you you don't see him for the rest of the weekend. Mm-hmm. Big Lowry had a nice hole in one. Yeah, oh, that was great. That was terrific. I would have loved to have been in the bar after that round, in, in the clubhouse bar after that round. Oh, my God. The amount of beer that must have been flowing from, from Shane Lowry. That would have been unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Oh, my goodness. So much. The I reaction. Liked, I liked too. his emotion. I liked his emotion afterwards. You know when some people get a hole in one, they're like, ah, great job. Like, oh, awesome. He was like, ah. <laughs> Which I kind of like from him, you know, the Irishman. Oh, it like goes right up to Ian Poulter and does it too, which is great. <laughs> you know, you see when he went to go Irish give together. Ian Poulter, a, like he went to go give Ian Poulter a, a wicked hard high five and Ian Poulter saw it coming. His, his awareness was there. He's like, he pulled back because he knew he was going to like break his hand. And then he came, came back around. Great oh. stuff. And uh, Kevin Streelman did it to Victor Hovland when Hovland had that hole in one too. He like, he was like high five and then he took it right there. <laughs> and, and Pavlin like grabbed him and like gave him a big like bear hug from behind. It was hilarious. Oh, so it's like good Landon, thing. you got a hole in one on a par three at TPC Sagres, but it was not seventeen. It was not. No, I think it was what eight. I think it was eight. Right? It was eighth hole. Just like I love. Like, I love their pin placements. Their pin placements on like the final two rounds. Like you might as well just put it in the drink. Like yeah. the, the pin. Like yeah, right. they're right on the edge. Aim for the center. Just aim for the center of the green. There's no reason not to at that point. I want to play TPC Sawgrass so bad. I, oh, I freaking that place good. looks unbelievably sweet and hard. I mean, just just watching this weekend, like so sweet. Water everywhere. Oh, just looks like a place that maybe number one. Maybe maybe my my number one favorite course now. I would need eighteen balls for eighteen holes. So much water. Oh, no, not my number almost one. Almost as much but... as PGA National. PGA National has a little bit more water, but it's nowhere near as good as TPC either. Much harder course too. Not I would have loved to play it in the wind too. Shoot like a two hundred. Like <laughs> Timmy, we played yes. we played in some windy conditions. And Brendan, when you when I when we talked to the couple weeks ago after the Florida escapade we had, the Champions Gate golf links. I'm not kidding 20 to 30 mile per hour winds in our in our front nine i mean i, I would have loved it i would have loved to see how difficult it would have been to to get around would Very you true. rather would you rather play if your number one course of playable courses would you rather play tpc sagras or pebble beach pebble pebble 
pebble. Yeah, pebble. But TPC, TPC climb, Sawgrass is great, but it's not really tough. tough. Climb the ranks Jeez. this week. It climbed the ranks. I loved how it was yeah. playing hard. Like that thing, you don't usually see that many. I balls liked in it was water playing hard. I liked that it was playing hard, but it wasn't hard for both. It wasn't hard across. The it never board. is. You always yes, have. Some, it is. No, it, it isn't. You always is. have. No, you, you always have guys saying that they wish they teed it's off. It's never and, that bad though, and they all even admitted it. Like after the round, like Will Zalatoris was like, "Thank God I didn't play." And yes, like he, like Sam Burns basically said he would have shot like ten over. Like all those guys. Yes. Yeah, Come Sam on, Burns. Mikey. Come on, Mike. Sammy's he's on my naughty list again. Still on the naughty list. Still, Still on, on the naughty it. list. Oh, wasn't he Anyways. playing in the final group? Did he play in the final group? Uh, yes, oh. he did. Yep. Yeah. No, he yeah. yeah right. It was him, Bond, Ardenbon, and Berger. No, that was Berger, Hovland, and Damon, which is another big story about the Berger drop. Oh yeah. Yeah, the Berger drop. The Berger drop was big. Oh man, um, that was wild. That was. Uh, for those who didn't see it, so Daniel Berger on the 16th hole hit a little bit of a flail, and he thought it crossed the green and went into the water. Uh, Victor Hovland and Joel Damon, who, who was playing with them, they were like, no, dude, it didn't do that. Like, you have to drop from back here. He threw kind of a tantrum. Like, he, he threw a bit of a tantrum. Um, and, you know, I, I couldn't tell. They said that they didn't have any video evidence of it either, so they couldn't do it that way um if i was him i would have been pissed though i would have been furious um but you know going up against hovland and and damon who seem like both really really good i mean like bill damon seems like a great guy victor hovland seems like a great guy and them like him getting very upset at both of them was was very interesting to watch i like how they stood their ground though yeah like, for sure victor, victor hovland especially him being a little younger like to to, I don't know. It's all about integrity. I mean, it's not like he was. I don't know. It's not. They like didn't he was doing seem it. like they were being that way. Like it, they didn't seem like they were being like malicious about it either. They were just like. Robin was no, like, they're just I like, just like hey, didn't see hey, that. that. This is not what I saw. Yeah, and boy was Daniel Berger pissed. <laughs> I didn't. I missed that, but it kind of brings me back to the the Ryder Cup when him and DJ were ball in a like a fescue area with a with a sprinkler head that was in the, the path of their, their swing. And you got the, the European rules official coming over and saying, eh -eh, can't move it. Got to play it. And Berger and Johnson tweaked. Love to see Victor Hovland staying true to his, his European roots. Uh, yeah. Who else? Oh my God. Who did that too? Oh, uh, Jared. Oh, That's Brooks good. Kepka in, uh, in the USO. I think it was two years ago in the U S open. Um, when he had like, an impediment like he thought it was like a sprinkler head and he was going to hit it and like the rules official comes over he's like oh it's not in your back it's not in your you know it's not in your stance it's not it won't you won't hit it on your swing through <laughs> and Kepka just goes if I hit this <laughs> you're paying for my surgery <laughs> and the rules official just goes like yes Blank. that's right <laughs> Timmy is not paying attention because it's at 129 with a minute and a half to go so, oh, what do we need, Tim? Keep it under six points for the remainder of the game? Under six points. Under six points. Oh, Corpus Christi, down five Ooh. to Texas Southern. Oh, boy. The Gulf Podcast the back on the basketball. <laughs> Both teams in the bonus. It's hard Timeout. not to do it. It's hard All not right, we to got, do it this week. We got Timmy's attention. Timeout. Yeah, Timeout. we got – it's a commercial <laughs> Um, Hey, DJ, nine under, you know, on, on Monday. Yeah. Yeah, course, course record chips in Unreal. for Eags, I think, on uh, on ten his or nine his final final hole the the week, and uh, he's cruising into the Valspar. You'll see his name on my DF lineups in a little. Yeah, it's interesting that they start uh, and they had to do the split nines um, for the final wrap for the final two rounds, and it made total sense. I kind of like it that way too. You know what I mean? Like, if you want to, you can go check out the back nine and everything. Like, that's cool. I like that. They should do that for more for more tournaments. No. But anyways, get out, um, <laughs> get out of town. It maybe if you're in not not in contention, but that's the point. Well, DJ wasn't in contention. He looks like. I mean, he he was he there. Was he only in contention because he shot nine under. 
Yeah. <laughs> you think that has anything to do with like he gets 16, 17, 18 out of the way and it's not looming over you for the for And the front nine. nine is so much easier. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> I I would definitely have to agree with that there. Um oh he just pushed over. How many golfers just looked like me out there this past weekend? Oh they, my god, everyone they drive it like even on like. they drive it way right on 18 into the, the pine needle, the straw, and then and then they're trying to chip out, and I saw at least six balls. I know it was more, but go like on the punch out, just run into the water. It was terrific. At the, Keep that's going. A rough, that's a yep. rough punch out. It's a very rough punch out. I would agree with that. They couldn't um, figure it out. I was but hoping we, for Lahari to make that birdie putt to go into a play. Yeah, I was. Really I was too. Hairy. You know, we will get in. I mean, we're getting into it now. But Cam Smith winning it. Uh, you guys know how I feel about Cam Smith. I love Cam Smith. Yeah, uh, I but so. cool. Cool cast. I will have to say, I think the entire golf world was rooting for Bond. I think everyone was rooting for the Bond man. And, uh, you know, he was so close to bringing that out. But here's the thing. I don't feel that bad for him. He walks away with $2.6 million. Can't feel that yep. bad for him. Don't feel bad. You just, you just can't. Don't feel bad. You just and, he's ba- and with the second place finish, he's basically guaranteed. I don't know how many FedEx Cup points. They won. I'll actually even look at that right now. Um, but I think he's basically all but guaranteed uh, him into like the FedEx Cup playoffs. The playoffs? Yeah, playoffs? because you only have to you have to get to 500 points in order to get to the playoffs. Playoffs? Basically, that's like the usual cutoff. There's no way. You, you, can, already, you can already tell that he's going to be in the playoffs? So he it's has... So it's so early. He went from 209th to 45, to 45th. Like he went from 209th in the rankings to 45th in the rankings. Wow. Yeah. Good for Lahiri. If he had won, if he had won, he would have probably been close to top 10. (laughs) Incredible. Do we like Cam Smith's look? I mean, boy, does he look rugged. He looks like. What's the, what's the animal yeah, from ice age what's the animal from ice age if the animal from ice age have had a mustache oh uh, slink the mustachio what's the guy what's the yeah he's he's his hair looks my goodness kudos to him for rocking that i i mean i look like a bozo too so but bozo. yeah cam smith is he's just doing him Winning golf. He, uh, Doesn't he live right around the corner and play play a decent amount? Ten minutes away. Mm-hmm. Ten minutes he, away. There. He didn't even play. He said he didn't even play much last week. I guess his his first time is he saw his family in like two plus years because Australia's yep. Yep. strict yep. as fuck with the COVID stuff, and they they handled it beautifully. I mean, no COVID in Australia. I don't think they they did a beautiful job, but hadn't seen his family in two years and. They come Crazy. over the week before the, the players, and he doesn't even play golf while hanging with the fam, and then he goes out and wins. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. So I, it's it's great. And, I mean, everyone's got to love the mullet. Like, it's hilarious. The mullet's fantastic. What's that character's name from Ice Age? My goodness, it's drawing a blank. He's, he's a, one of the best characters. It almost looks like Camway lost some weight, and, like, he's just, like, getting, getting – like, he looks lost like he's been – Lost the weight through the mullet. Sid, how do we forget Sid? Best friends with Mr. with Mr. Mark Leishman, with him and Mark Leishman, best friends. Oh, unreal. By the way, last year, Artaban Lahiri finished 118th in the FedEx Cup. He had 475 points. Currently has 363 points by finishing. Yeah. So he's he'll be he'll be there at the end of the year unless he misses pretty much every cut <laughs> going in. Um I'd like to see more from him. I liked what I saw in the interviews. uh, Yeah, he was very, very good in the interviews, I think. Um, I just really liked him. I I thought he was great. Um, Obviously, like, coming from a non, um, like, a non-golfing country, really. I mean, I know, you know, India has play. India has golf players. There's been, you know, Arjun Atwell, everything like that. But like it's not a golf powerhouse. Like even though there's 1.2 billion people there, um, you know, you don't hear them talk about golf a lot. And to have him like finally really showing what he can do was really really cool. 
I think. Definitely. Oh, man, boys. Uh, so that closes that tournament out. Like I said before, not pleased. Not my favorite viewing. Let's not give the fifth. Let's not give the the first non-major any more any more airtime, Brendan. You know, let's. It's the fifth right, right, the fifth right. most beloved tourney. Eh, is it? No. Eh. I mean, you the fifth can't. major really is the RBC Heritage, so that's really all that matters. But you know, we'll allow it. <laughs> um, it was good little good little teaser for some uh, big time golf coming up in April. It was. It definitely was. It was a, you know, I can't say it was a great event though, because it wasn't that good of an event. I think a couple guys said that they they like it better in May. Can't blame them. Can't blame them either. But what are they going to do then? Put the PG, put the PGA Championship. You know what I mean? Switch the PGA Championship to, um, uh, sorry, Tim. R.I.P. Uh, the over just hit. Um, you know what are they going to do? Put the PGA Championship back in in March now? Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, no can do. Cannot. I don't, I don't feel that bad for these guys. You know, Timmy, we just know, went down man. to Florida. What? I just went walking on Agawam with, with my wife here and, uh, you know, it's like 50 degrees out. I was whacking the, balls. Balls. whacking the ball around, having a good time. Mm. Florida weather. That's it's awesome. always in the, uh, the, the club did you take? Took the five iron. I've been taking the five iron. Best part about, best part about about being able to go out there right now is the amount of balls you come back with. <laughs> everything's melting. Everything's the ri- mm. the rivers. The rivers no longer ice. You know. Yep. I uh, just tried to try to jump one of the one of the little brooks. I got a little wet. Shoot, okay. dug about a foot deep in a Ooh. bunch of muck, but it was worth it. I got a couple balls out of the deal. Very nice. And every ball over there is very nice you know every ball it's like a callaway it's like a tailor-made it's like a pro v i'm about to start yeah. my own my own my own sale my own no kirk no kirkies no kirkies coming back unfortunately Brynn found a kirky Brynn you found, found a, a kirky? kirky Brynn did she's yelling she picks one up kirkland i said <laughs> immediately thought of you guys <laughs> the kirky <laughs> baby throw it back <laughs> <laughs> throw it back my top flight Mike found a top flight. Put it back. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately no. Immediately no. That's how I would much rather have boys. a Kirkland than top flight. Yes. Much Kirkland. rather have a Kirky. Much rather have a Kirky. Kirklands oh, are not, I shouldn't say throw it back. I actually do like playing them. Yeah, they're not Me bad. Too. That's what happens anyway. when you steal Titleist technology. <laughs> right. Oh. When you find a Snell. Snells are the same thing. Snells are great. Timmy was mm. playing a... Uh, what was it, Timbo? All week the in vices. Florida. Vices. Those are not bad. Not bad either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the uh, speckles. Yeah, I got a couple specks, colored specks on them. A little flair. Shout out but to our guys at uh, shout out to our guys at Piper Golf who make who make very nice balls. Hopefully, uh, may have something in the works with them down the line. So you never know. But uh, but yeah, you know, oh, maybe oh. maybe maybe play some pipers coming up sooner sooner or later. But anyways. Amazing to no, not amazing tournament. Usually I'm just so giddy about how great tournaments are. Lackluster performance, lackluster performance from from uh from the players championship this year, all because of the weather. That's it it happens. But gonna put it down. Probably the not my favorite tournament this year. So we are moving on, ladies and gents. Uh I don't know if you guys saw this over the weekend, but Nelly Corda. Uh, it's taking some time away from the LPGA tour Had a little blood. She, they found a blood clot um, when she was uh, doing some, you know, having a workout, uh, went to the, went to the emergency room, wasn't feeling great. They found a blood clot. So speedy recovery for her, uh, you know, always sad to That's hear okay. about stuff like that. And especially to one of the best in the game right now too. I don't know if she's world number one, but uh, anymore I, I you know I think maybe Daniel Kang might have taken that over but always sad to see you know an Olympic gold medalist go down too yeah just yeah that's too bad go. which are all the best blood clots can get a uh, get real bad real they can quick. get scary man those things water. those things are no joke um yeah. yeah I don't know about you guys I mean 
we do have a daily fantasy lineup this week. We are going to name them all. I don't really have anything to say right now about the Valspar. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm being completely honest with you guys, I'm still Let's getting over the fact that like we had like a bad tournament this week when I didn't expect it. I'm still kind of sad about that, but hey, you know what? It might happen. Still, still at a Nisbrook, the Copperhead course, as always, or am I thinking of a different tournament? Yep. No, nope. no, nope. you're thinking of the correct yeah. tournament. This is the Copperhead. Still in Florida? Is this still part of the, yep. the Florida part Swing? part of the Florida Swing. Yeah, I think this is one of the – this might be the last tournament in the Florida Swing. Sam Burns, defending champ. Sam Mike's Burns. mortal. Mike's, Mike, do you want to start it off because I got to go pee? 25 to 1 <laughs> odds for Sammy. Go let it Go let it out, Bren. All right, you guys got it. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll hang tight. We won't, we won't make any announcements just yet. But, uh, yeah, Tim, you're right. 22 Valspar, Copperhead course at Innisbrook, Palm Harbor, Florida. Maybe we'll play, play this one next time we go down to Florida. Yeah. Or Florida Escapade round two. Is it a public course? I don't think so. I don't no. know. But, uh, I know they got a few down yeah. there. You got if JP you, in if there. You were to, if you were to, if you were to have like a, a free pass in, in a year, to do another golf trip would you want to go somewhere in florida again or would you want to try somewhere different that's a that's like it, florida was so great you Florida know? was terrific man yeah. it was it really was I have a hard time saying anywhere else but there's way more courses out there i mean we did yeah. it for a good price that was probably the the uh that was the the good part about it but like yeah, if we, i mean we might get suckered into the golden corral again if we go <laughs> If we go down yeah. to Florida, Mike and Allison, we went to the Golden Corral. Might go, we... might get back to Golden Corral. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's listening, we went to Golden Corral for the experience. It was quite the experience. It got did not let us down. Did We're not back. Let us down, Brandon. You ever been to the Golden Corral? <laughs> <laughs> One. <laughs> we went. We went when we went to Florida. <laughs> Worst experience in my life. Unbelievable. Oh. James, yeah. so get this, like Timmy, before <laughs> James gets there is like, we drive by the Golden Corral and Timmy's eyes light up and he's like, wow, Golden Corral. We got to go. It was like half yeah. serious, half, half joking. Yeah. Timmy, Timmy's never been. So like, it was like a running joke. And then James comes down Friday, flies in and like, like I'm pushing Golden Corral and James is like, Mike, why the fuck do you want to go to the Golden Corral so bad? <laughs> And I'm just riding with it, really. Shout out I wasn't, Jimbo. I wasn't throwing Timbo under the bus, but it was Timmy's idea. Um, yeah. We ended up coming back from celebration late, late Saturday night, Sunday night, and uh, you know we we wanted an experience, and boy did we get it! Boy did we get one! It was, was your how was your rock hard filet mignons? <laughs> I mean, and then I ate fish. He ate fish from a golden corral. <laughs> How are you alive? <laughs> I didn't feel spectacular after. I did not. Oh, no. I was shitting oh my Brian. God, made it. Tim. I would have been throwing Brian up made the golden on my plate. Brian made the golden corral into a verb. He said afterwards, he's like, Yeah, I got to go take a golden corral. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not the only, like, it's, it's both ways with the golden corral. <laughs> You gotta hold you gotta hold the little trash can right here too. Like it's nuts. All right. Oh, we'll, hop into, we'll hop into we'll hop into Michael DF. Adams' DF lineup here. Yeah, cause... after let's hope it doesn't get golden corralled. <laughs> we <laughs> we just got Corpus Christi. Did they get the dub, Tim? They did yeah. uh, no, yeah. they did not get Texas, Texas Southern. Texas Southern yeah. gets the dub over Corpus Christi. We got 10 minutes until Indiana, Wyoming. Big battle. That's a good one. That's, That's a good, good one. A lot, of, a lot of people have Indiana. I think Wally Zerbiak, I've been watching a lot of CBS Sports Network. Wally Zerbiak has, I think, Indiana in his final four. <laughs> wow. But, uh, yeah, wow. I don't know if you've watched CBS Sports Network, Tim, and I don't know if you guys recall the name Shelvin Mack, but he played on mm-hmm. Butler with G. Hayward under his coach Stevens. And really? Shelvin Mack is now on CBS Sports Network. Boy, did I like him as a player. But, Timmy, he said something on 
Sunday night. It must have been his first night on the spot on the on the show because he was a little <laughs> uneasy. Sorry if you're listening, Shelvin. And and I'm not sorry, but you had more hate towards Providence College Friars than any other basketball team in the tournament. He said that Providence College doesn't do anything well and they don't do anything together, Tim. He said they don't do anything together. Have you been to the dunk, Shelvin? Have you seen this team play, Shelvin? This team is more together. It's unbelievable. I I wanted to shut the the telecast off when I heard it, Timbo, but uh, it just gave me a little bit more uh, reason to, you know, fuel that fire. And, you know, Coach Ed Cooley's got him fired up. Saw him walking off the plane a couple hours ago in Buffalo. Boy, did it does it look good to to see them see them here and as a four seed playing playing the South Dakota State Jackrabbits. But I didn't like didn't like Shelvin Mack's assessment of the Providence College Friars. I don't know how much research or how much analyzing he's done or how much he's spent. Timmy, you go. T- take it away, Tim. I, I see. You don't have piece. Providence College doesn't have one person that averages over thirteen points per game. They it's like, together. Who's Who's, who's stepping up this game? Who's stepping up this game? If one person doesn't have it that game, they're going to the next guy. It's it's a team. There's no there's no one leader. They're just whoever's game it is this game. You know, Noah Horkler has 30 points one game, and then Barnum has 20 points, and then, you know, Nate Watson, he's a huge part of it because Nate Watson is, is like, supposedly their best player. Everyone guards the shit out of him, and so it opens up everyone else. So it's they're all intricate parts to this winning formula that is this year. Yeah, sometimes like they make it way closer than it should be, for sure. For sure. But they're not there's no all Americans on the team. That's all it is. I don't know what these talk about. They they have to do it together. Yeah. If they I weren't doing it together, he, they wouldn't be where they are. I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about, Tim. It just mm-hmm. got my my bo- my blood flowing. I was boiling a Here's little Brandon. bit after that one. But uh Brennan's over there thinking that Villanova's in a good spot, but uh Little does he know that they're going to lose to – who do they play in the second round if, if both both good teams win? Oh, they're going to lose to Ohio Loyola. State. Loyola, Chicago, baby. They're going to lose to Loyola, Chicago. You heard it here, brother. But uh, here we go. I'm going to start at the top. Most expensive dude. My guy earned a lot of respect for this motherfucker this past weekend. Justin Thomas. He freaking <laughs> battled. He was grinding, just like I love to do. Golf is a game where you need to grind. You need to be in every shot. And he didn't make an excuse. He didn't, you know, he did, probably didn't play as good as he wanted to. It's following two rounds after his, what I'm going to call his Friday round, his second round. Um, but JT, a lot of momentum, my dude. A lot of momentum. Second up, talking about momentum. DJ Dustin Johnson nine under to finish the players championship with one of the best rounds tied for the best round at TPC Sawgrass. I don't know what place he finished in. I think he was seven under for the tourney, but uh, D- DJ, let's go, let's go, let's go. Next up, it's a lot of money. Hopefully, it's well spent because we're going to dip. Scrubs. We're going <laughs> to. We're going to dip down to Team Scrubs here. Kevin Streelman. Streels. 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 Kevin Streelman, 20, 2014 Travelers champ. I was an intern at that one. Streels, like, you never age. You look like you did back then. Uh, just a little less hair, I think, nowadays. I don't but, know if uh, I ever told you guys the story. Sorry to interrupt you. Mike, yes, but you did. You walked right? into a, uh, walked into a bar and, and his, and his bag is right there. And him and his caddy are just sitting at the bar. I was like, I was too afraid to go up. I was too afraid. I'm like I, I got starstruck by Kevin freaking Streelman. <laughs> I was like, uh, dude, you you're did. supposed to be gone. You missed the cut. <laughs> Streels. Can I finish? All right. Chugga, <laughs> chugga, chugga, chugga. Chugga, 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 choo, choo. All aboard the Charlie Hoffman train. <laughs> we got Charlie Hoffman. Love it. What did he say about the PGA Tour, Brenna? That it stinks. <laughs> Basically. Really? Really? He said it doesn't protect its players enough when he wanted to go to the Saudi Golf League. <laughs> 
Charlie. Sure he's got a lot of people chirping him on the course now. Yeah, have fun on your yacht, Charlie, while you're making millions of dollars every year. Him and winning, the, winning him, and Coke Rack, him and Coke Rack just playing each other in Saudi Arabia 24-7. <laughs> Hopefully he sticks around for the Valspar because I got him in my lineup. Hopefully DF doesn't call <laughs> me for, for with a, with a five-minute after first-round tee shots withdrawal, whatever. Um, next up, Joel Damon. Yep. The, the Damon. Yep. Not yep. bad. Not bad. Be- Steady Eddie. This week. Steady Eddie. Cheap and week. then we got Pat Perez, you know. Pat Perez is uh boy did I see him packing a dinger on the course on Thursday. Packing a bomb, some tobacco product in his side cheek. Looks like, like he Pat. was having the <laughs> he was his ball was all over the place. Left, right, green, putt, par. Looked like it doesn't <laughs> matter. It doesn't matter if he hits it into the water or if he sticks it two feet from the pin every time he hits the ball he just looks absolutely disgusted yeah. <laughs> i love pat perez i think he's a he's an absolute he's a, character he's a guy enjoying his his time on the golf course so um you know what more can be said there so that's my that's my six you got thomas johnson hoffman Strelman, damon perez another five ducks five, <laughs> another five bucks down the tube <laughs> I've been, de- I've been uh, depositing. Timmy, you want to go? Yeah, I'll go. All and right, I'm going to start this one different. I'm going to say, if you don't have this person in your lineup, you should go put him in your lineup because he is, I mean, it's my lowest one. I don't know how he, he scraped by lowest, but the past three weeks, we've seen him in finishing, at least in the first couple of days, he's always in the top 10. And that is that $6,700, Graham McDowell. He's been playing very well lately. Has been. Graham, no way. Graham McDowell, 6700 I, I love the McDowell. I love the McDowell. Always used to play with him in PGA Tour. Loved when he won. Yeah. Was it the U.S. Open at Pebble? Mm-hmm. Bingo. Oh, Graham, good guy. Uh, right, after, right, after, right after that, Kevin Kisner. I mean, he's been playing great. This is a little longer course, so that's why I was a little tentative put in, putting him in there. But played well past two weeks, Kevin Kisner. Is. Ryan Harmon, he's, he's on his upswing. You know how he has his swings, or he plays really well for a little, and then he plays bad for a little. He's on his upswing. Um, ride it out. Ride it out. Ride it out. So I'm going to go there. Um, Brendan, I'm going to go with your, your boy, Matthew Fitzpatrick. Um, oh. You know, bad this week a, last week. Very bad week last bad week. week. Bad week. Got to got to swing around. He's diff- completely different tournament. Um, got to go with the uh, the past winner, Sammy Burns, ninety six hundred bones, and someone who was very much in contention up until the end, Keegan Bradley. Keegan Bradley is my last Keeg. pick, and that's where I'm going with. Keegs, good pick. He said he played well. You, you could you could see uh, a little bit of disgust on his face after his 17th and 18th on, on Monday, but, uh, he, he said he played well. So Timmy, look out for that lineup. Have you Boys. ever seen his, like, his like pre-draft routine or his pre-drive routine? I mean, I, I don't know what he's doing out there. <laughs> he's a little weird, a little weird, a little weird. <laughs> very weird. It's don't copy weird. it. Don't copy it. Do don't try that one it. at home. Oh, well I have, very similar lineups to to both of you. Um, so this is going to be interesting. Timmy, First did you get up, some bets in on this game before Brendan goes? Yeah, I did. I do the do the three dollar. Yeah, I did actually did a DraftKings one too. Um, well, I did a DraftKings up. lineup. Are you on Rhode Island these... Sportsbook or are you on D- D- DK? Both. Wow, I got to download well, just, DK. That's commitment. <laughs> it's a great. Uh, it's a wonderful time to live in Rhode Island with the Rhode Island Sportsbook app. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. All right, what do we got, Brent? Anyways, so I got Sam Burns, $9,600. So, Mike, hopefully your sworn enemy decides to play well this week since he's not in your lineup. He's in our Who lineup. Sam Burns is, huh? Uh, ne- next up, I do have uh, one of the enemies of the PGA Tour. I have Jason Kokrak. Love, yes. Loves that Saudi money. Loves That's that Saudi money. It's hypocritical of you. It's hypocritical oh. of you not putting Chugga 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 Hoffman in your lineup, but putting <laughs> Kokrak in there? I, no. I did. I did. I did. You know he's going to happen this week. You know what's going to happen this week with Hoffman. He's going to go Nanners. 
He's going to go Nanners. He always goes Nanners when I don't have him in. It's crazy. Thank you. Uh, but I'm, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Well, $9,200, Jason Kokrak, watch him absolutely shit the bed. Um, even though he finished in the top 10, I think five straight times at this tournament, something insane like that. Like he's, he's wow. a monster. Yep. He's, he's a Paul Casey type. If Paul Casey was playing this week, everyone would have Paul Casey in their lineup this week. Uh, number three, I've got Tommy Fleetwood at 9,100. Uh, very consistent and had a surprisingly decent week last week, but you know, Hopefully he doesn't fall off again. Number four, Keegan Bradley, 8,400, playing probably the best golf since, you know, he played, he won the BMW a couple of years ago, or he was close. Yeah, he won the BMW, right? When he played against uh, Justin Rose, wasn't, didn't he win the BMW? Or maybe not. Um, I'll look it but up probably the best golf going. he's been playing in a while. Um, mm-hmm. My final two are Joel Damon. So nice little bucket, you know, him and Mikey solidarity with the bucket hat and Troy Merritt, Troy Merritt, $6,600. Troy Merritt plays very well at this tournament, finished in the top 10 last year, finished in the top 20 in 2019. Good player having a little bit of a struggle bus right now, but we'll see if he can get out of the funk. 2018 BMW. You are correct. Keegs. Yep. Yep. 2018 BMW. 2018 BMW. What does he hold, Tim? He holds the aggregate score record at uh, at Innisbrook Copperhead Course. He's no biggie. No biggie. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty Patrick good. Cantley's not playing this week, huh? I think Patrick Cantley got <laughs> got a PGA got a what's it called? Got a little uh, little sad after <laughs> after the players because he was yeah. in that crazy crazy line too. Boy, he was terrible. He was awful. Was he? Oh, he was horrendous. Where did he finish? God, I think he finished like plus six cut. or something like that. He played Colin Morikawa missed the cut too. Incredible. He was terrible. I mean, they all played in that terrible bracket. Yeah. So it happens. Rory missed the cut, right? Didn't Rory miss it too? Rory was a he. Everyone thought Rory was going to go in and win it this year. Right. Oh, brutal. I liked on that I liked on that windy day on that 17th hole everyone was taking off their hats and just like just something different. I like when it, I, they I couldn't don't they couldn't hit that. the ball if they had their hats on because it was flying off. So they're like screw right, it. But they're losing the ball. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Is Maura Cowell playing this weekend or did he push did he did he withdraw too? I think he withdrew as well. My goodness. TPC they, got the best. Done with Florida. Florida. They got the mm. best of some folks. They're done. TPC done got the best it. of most of folks. What's the tournament afterwards? Ooh, uh, I think it's San. I think it's the Texas Open. Is that the one Jordan won? That's TPC San Antonio. Yeah, let me just double check the schedule real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Joel. You guys don't. I already know there's room on the Providence College Friars bandwagon. There is room if you want to jump on. Yep. Oh, sorry. There's the match play. Sorry. It goes Valspar, match play, Texas Open. That's why. Then the have Masters. You, have you have you created any 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 brackets yet, Timbo? Um, I'm I have. Sure. I have. I'm curious where the Homer, where the Homer uh, has PC uh, bouncing bowing out. Uh, I created two lineups, and one was like a. One was a homer one, and one was not a homer one. You got them winning at all? Uh, I had them losing to Duke in the final. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, what are you laughing at, dude? I hate you guys. <laughs> uh, and then my real one. Yeah, uh, what do you have in your? And what do you think? What do you think? Um, I, I mean, honestly, people are picking the the Jackrabbits are 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 plus two. The PCs, I think, only two point favorites. That's scary. For a 13, no. 4, 13, come on. Um, I think I have them losing, like, round losing Iowa. Or like Iowa, that. I think they yeah, play I Iowa. Believe so. oh, well. Yeah, I don't know. It it wasn't a good uh, wasn't a good finish in the the Big East, bowing out to no, Creighton by twenty seven. So, you know, we 
we've we've seen some thrillers this year. Thrillers. You're thrillers. only as good as your last. So true statement. Put a bad bad taste in our mouth. But I mean, if they blow out the Jackrabbits, look out. Look out. Yeah. Mm. Timbo, you got a golfer poll? Yeah, I do. Excellent. Just a quickie. All right. So this is like a wait. A you guys didn't a... ask my final four, and we didn't ask your final four, Mike. <laughs> it's only Tuesday. That's true. I haven't. Okay. I'm gonna wait until. I really haven't sat down and. Uh, I, I I've got Gonzaga winning it all in my first one. Gonzaga. Uh, I yeah. UCLA. Arizona, Kansas, Gonzaga, Gonzaga versus Arizona, Gonzaga champs. I have, uh, as you can imagine, I have Villanova. I have, <laughs> I have Villanova. I have, uh, here's a big one. Um, what do we got? I got Kentucky. You got an all four Kentucky. Yeah, people like Kentucky. I got Zaga and I've got Kansas. And of course I have Villanova beating Kansas because we have never lost to Kansas in the in the tournament. And I have Gonzaga beating Kentucky and I have Villanova winning the national. Oh my god, that's ridiculous. Team Homer, baby. Huge time homer. Awesome. Can't wait till they lose. I invite, love you it. Guys, I invite you guys to take another look at the Wisconsin Badgers. I think they're Nah, I got them going out in the first round. PC Ugh. beat the Wisconsin Badgers earlier this year. PC beat Texas Tech, who's getting a lot of love. I got Texas Tech year. in the Elite Eight. I got Texas Tech beating Duke. Texas Tech, I guess they're coming on hot. They didn't have a great – No, they did not. Start, they had a really bad start this year. Yeah, I guess their defense is like you might not score a basket. That's what I've heard. So, uh, golf ball, Tim? Golf ball? <laughs> yes, I do. do. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. So this is like kind of like a plain style that I've never really done before. Um, but the, the basically the premise is, is that if it's a kind of a serious match between two people or a group of four um, on one of the either the front or the back nines, you do one one nine, you do no gimme ball in hole. Um, like straight up, no, no gimmies at all. And mm -hmm. then on the other nine, you do, you can do one of two things. You can do either a, anything within a putter grip length is a gimme or anything within a putter length is a gimme. Mm -hmm. So, and you do the gimmies either on the front nine or the back nine, depending on what kind of match you want to do. And uh, the other nine is straight up ball and hole. Mm -hmm. What would you guys rather do? Would you guys rather have the gimmies on the front nine or would you rather have the the gimmies on the back nine for this hardcore match? You know what I mean? Like, say it's for twenty dollars for a match or something like that, or a championship match. Front, back. Make them put it. Make them put it on the back. Let's see what you're made of. Back. I can't put for shit. <laughs> Front. Let's see what you're made of. Oh, put it I out on putt. the back. If I could putt, I would say front, but I can't putt, so. Give me those, give me those gimmies on the back. Give, get me in the leather. That's all I need. Just like what Shane Lowry and uh, and uh, Bryson DeChambeau just always making fun of the, always doing that at the Ryder Cup. Just get it within the leather. That's all that matters. All right, and then I want you to put for your your fantasy course. I want you to put the four par threes. I want you to put four par threes on this fantasy course. Okay. What part? Uh, part threes are you putting in this is from a good question in. very brendan's going to choose the four par threes from harbor town so just go no, through those, Brendan, real quick all right 12 <laughs> augusta mm -hmm. 16 16 at augusta no is it seven at pebble yep seven at pebble the one yard one way down yep. seven at pebble you got to go with 17 at at tpc What's uh, what's the most well known, best looking par three? What's that one at um? Is it Cypress Point? With the little yes. tree, uh, or is that Tory Pines? No, not no. It's Cypress Point. Yards. Yeah, it's the one where we when we had Blake on. It's the one he talked about. Yeah. He's like, it's the most beautiful hole in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see mm -hmm. the hole number. 
par 16 or uh, sorry <laughs> number 16 yes some like it's that later one 16th hole par three it's like should be like 230 yards or something 34 like that. yards yeah man i might rethink this one but yeah i go i go this one this one's sick i'll play from the forward tees though mm. yeah. Brendan. I can go next. I will go uh, <laughs> 17 at TPC Sawgrass. I will go 7 at Pebble Beach. I will go, if you guys are ready for this, I will go the 16th hole at Himmerlin Golf Resort and Spa in Denmark. It is a 79-yard par 3 that is just straight up almost. And you got to absolutely, like, it is the shortest par 3 in the history of either the PGA tour or the European tour, but boy, is it brutal. All right. All right. I like All right. That. Fair. And then I will go, uh, <laughs> sorry, I will go 17 at Harvard Town Golf. <laughs> Cause I love that for three. <laughs> I birdied it the last time I played it. So I'm keeping it. Unreal. Unreal. Or sorry, no, I'm sorry, 12 at Augusta. Jesus, can't do that. Can't do that. 12 at Augusta. Taking out yeah. Harbortown. 12 at Augusta. I mean, it's, it, it's like basically we're just saying what are the best four par threes in the world? I mean, you, how can you not put 12 at Augusta in there? 16 yeah. is even debatable. I mean, 16 is just for all the magical moments that have happened there. Uh, but yeah, out, out of those two, you got to choose 12. Uh, just beauty, beauty wise and, and all that. Um, yeah, I guess I guess seven at Pebble and seventeen at TPC, and then I guess the lone wolf would be Mike. That's a good call. The the Cypress one. I, I believe I chose one of that one in in another golfer poll. It was the sixteenth at Cypress? Um, hmm. It was like a backyard hole or something like that. I don't know what I chose. But uh. Yeah, uh, there's also like I wanted to work in a links kind of thing. There aren't many famous links mm. because there's the scenery around those. Yeah, are like hard fantastic. to make. Right. You know what I mean? But um, there's like the postage stamp one, which is I believe it at Troon or something like that. And um, and there's also those amazing, uh, amazing cliff ones that like you know the the uh, the Ryder Cup was at or or you know Kiowa Island that had a great one. Um, mm. One of those like banded abandoned dunes the ones on the cliff but right so that's it but um yeah i, I don't know mike i forgot about that uh, the cypress one so i might have to choose that one everyone just raves about that and there's a layout area to the left so you don't mm -hmm. have to hit the green in one if you don't want yeah looks like you got to hit driver though yes <laughs> i'm fine with yeah oh, you, guys, you guys know my carry my total carry on my driver we can make it into a par four right we could we could short par four, short par four. That's all that matters. Way more fun. Boys, right, I know we've got to sign off for Indiana, Wyoming, but the conclusion of the bachelor is going to be on tonight. It is oh. on right now. It's got my attention. I mean, Clayton is making an absolute mockery of himself. It's a riot. I am, it's a riot. I am, I'm cutting, <laughs> I'm cutting it. College basketball is fine on the podcast. We will not talk about the Bachelor. <laughs> Shannon got me into it. Shannon got me into it. Unbelievable drama. She, he's walking. I... He's walking Susie out. I don't know if Susie's in or She's out. Going? Don't tell me. I don't. All right. This is that. That's a definite podcast. I'm done. I'm done with this. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs>